Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Agriculture continues to receive substantial sums of investment to increase food production over the years. These investments continue to sustain key policies and the execution of developmental projects while supporting the longevity of the sector. From 2020 to 2023, the sum of $122 billion was pumped into Guyana's agriculture sector with heavy emphasis to expand various developmental projects while implementing new programs. Many countries around the world are contracting. Today, only the agriculture sector alone is growing by 7%. And this year, we have, we'll see it grow by almost 10.4%. While remaining on track to achieve CARICOM's 25 by 2025 goal, the country continues to establish itself as a leader in agriculture. Minister of Agriculture Zulfikar Mustafa has disclosed that Guyana will not renege on its decision for the Black Belly Sheep program to be rolled out shortly in Region 5. He also explained why the program has been delayed. We are working with Barbados jointly on this program. Barbados has to secure these sheep before they gave us. Barbados told me last year that we'll receive the sheep at some point in time. And when you look at the budget, you'll see that, you'll see that we, are, we have catered for that tranche to come in Guyana before the first quarter, and um, before the first half of this year. The Rose Hall Sugar Estate is scheduled to commence grinding of sugar canes by the end of next month. This was announced by Minister Mustafa during the consideration of the 2024 budget estimates in the Parliamentary Committee of Supply in the National Assembly. You will repair the boiler, but during the course of grinding, you might find a leakage. You have to repair it, and that will be a continuous process. All those arrangements, all the repairs are in process and will be completed for the Rosal Estate to commence grinding. As part of the agenda for the modernization of Guyana's legal framework, the concept of restorative justice is gradually taking center stage. Restorative justice is an alternative approach that seeks to repair harm through the involvement of the victim, the offender, and the community. A two-day training session commenced at the Guyana Police Force Officers Mess Hall, which is benefiting 70 persons including Tashaus, prison and probation officers and representatives of non-governmental organizations. Restorative justice allows you to stop that cycle and to find out why this person is back before the court. And if you are able to find out why, perhaps you can give him a chance. On Tuesday, ExxonMobil Guyana conducted a field oil spill response exercise to test the readiness and effectiveness of its team, equipment and processes. This exercise seeks to ensure that in the unlikely event of an oil spill, there is adequate in-country response capacity. The Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo this year has so far attracted participation from more than 21 countries with close to 200 exhibitors, 30 sponsors and will feature 19 sectors. The event will be held in Guyana from February 19 to 22 this year. This conference is important for our, for our local private sector to network, to engage, to build partnership with international companies because that is something that as a government we have advocated for from the inception. Since we took office in August of 2020, we have always said that we need to bring more opportunities to Guyanese and Guyanese businesses. Because of that, we would have taken the, I would say, the giant step as a country, a new oil producing country, a small country as Guyana, to move towards a local content legislation. The Ministry of Natural Resources will be holding countrywide sensitization workshops on the local content legislation to enlighten persons on how they can benefit directly from the oil and gas sector, and also to access the country's capacity to supply goods and services to the sector. 
Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat revealed that the workshops will start just after the 2024 national budget is passed and will involve the ministry, the operators and even some of the contractors. The reason for doing that is to ensure that people understand truly what is local content and how they can benefit from it. Because we here in Joshua, we hear about it every day. We are part of it. We benefit from it. But if you go maybe to Kukwani, to Crabble Creek, to Escobar Coast, to Region 9 and let them, they probably heard about it. They probably saw it on the news, but they don't know exactly how they can actually benefit from the local content legislation. As the Ministry of Health continues the decentralization of healthcare services and programs, Region 6 has been equipped with a medical laboratory program. The launch saw the first cohort of 25 persons getting ready to be trained for a period of 12 months through the Ministry's Health Sciences Education Training Program. We want to train you to be able to do HPA1C using the, the simple machines that we'll put at the health center. But more importantly, we want you to use the more sophisticated machines that we'll have at each of our labs in the regional hospitals. Residents of Region 6 continue to benefit from improved health services as a new dental clinic is now available at Cumberland Health Center, East Burby's Quarantine. The section of the health center, which was specifically renovated for the clinic, cost $3 million. Commissioning the new clinic was Minister Anthony, who stressed the importance of dental hygiene and encouraged the residents to make use of the services that have now been brought closer to them. Primary health care in Region 6 will further be boosted as a spanking new $20.3 million health center was commissioned at Skep Mode, East Bank, Verbeese on Saturday. Speaking at the commissioning of the 42nd health facility in the region, Minister Anthony stressed that government is committed to expanding and advancing quality health care in the country. We want people, wherever you're living in this country, to be able to access health care service. That is very, very important to us. And when we talk about primary health care, we want if a child has problems, they must be able to access care. If an older person got a health problem, they must be able to access care. The Guyana Teachers Union, GTU, has made a call for teachers to stage an industrial action from February 5 to 16 to demonstrate their disapproval with the actions and non-actions of the Ministry of Labor. In spite of the alleged threats, Minister Hamilton is urging teachers to abstain from the civil disobedience, deeming it illegal and illegitimate. Do not allow the Guyana Teachers Union and its executive to threaten you or intimidate you. They cannot and they are in no position to cause you to lose your job to cause you not to be promoted. To eradicate squatting, Guyana has created a plan that removes these persons from government reserves, making them owners of titled lands. Persons living along the reserve on the east bank of the Demerara River at Herstelling were made homeowners. The 30 families have been relocated to new houses at Great Diamond East Bank Demerara. The houses, which measure 30 feet in length and 20 feet wide, are similar to the low-income homes and are worth $5.2 million each. So similarly, we are moving along in terms of aggressively relocating persons. There are persons who have had their land identified very close to here, and those persons will, have, will be dealt with in another way. As the celebration of Guyana becoming a republic kickstarts, the Georgetown District Children's 2024 Mashramani Competition was on Monday launched at the National Cultural Center. This year, the celebration is themed Celebrating Our Peoples and Our Prosperity.